All right, your face was the first thing in the frame. Can I move now? Yeah, you're okay. good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna open. Okay, ready? Can we close the doors? Um, Where diamonds 
Tis not private, nor carried so. Tis common, my fair sister, your love to Mirabelle, your blushes tell it. Tis too much known and spoken of too largely, and with no little shame, I wonder at it. Is it a shame to love? To love undiscreetly. A virgin should be tender of her honor, close and secure. I am as close as can be, and stand upon a strong and honest guard, too, unless this warlike age need a portcullis. And yet, I confess, I love it. Yeah, hear the people. Now I say, hang the people. He that dares believe what they say, dares be mad and give his mother, nay, his own wife, up to rumor. The whole ground of truth they build on is a tavern, and their best censure sack, sack in abundance. For as they drink, they think, they ne'er speak modestly unless the wine be poor or they want money. Pray understand, if their tongues be true, as if in vino veritas be an oracle, what woman is or has been ever honest? Give up it ten round cups. They'll swear Lucretia does not want power to resist Tarquin, but want pleasure to be stayed no longer. And Portia, that was famous for her piety to her love lord, they'll kiss you up, died of the pox. Well, well, there is something, sister. If there be, brother, tis none of their things. Tis not yet so monstrous. My thing is marriage, and at his return I will put their squint eyes right again. Uh, marriage? Hey, tis true, his father is a rich man, rich both in land and money, and he is heir. A young and a handsome man, I must confess to, but of such qualities and such wild flings, I should be loath to own him for my brother. Methinks a, a rich mind in a state indifferent will prove the better fortune. If he be wild, the reclaiming him to good and honest brother will make much for my honor, which prosper shall be the study of my love and life, too. You say well, would he thought as well and loved too. He marry, he'll be hanged first. But he knows no more what the conditions and the ties of love are than I do how to build a church. He was ever a loose and strong defier of all order. His loves are wanderers. They knock at each door and taste each dish, but are no residents. Or they say he may be brought to think of marriage, as will be no small labor. Thy hopes are no strangers. I know there is a labored match now followed for which he was sent for home to be not abused. Nantolette has two fair daughters, and he must make his choice. Let him take freely, for all this I despair not. My mind tells me that I, and only I, must make him perfect, and in that hope I rest. Since you're so confident, prosper your hope, I'll be no adversary. Keep yourself fair and right, you shall not wrong you. When I forget my virtue, no man will leave. Uh. Woo! Welcome to Paris once more, gentlemen. We have had a merry and a lusty ordinary, and wine, and good meat, and a bouncing reckoning. If only the wenches are not for my diet. They're too lean and thin, their embraces brawn bonnet. <laughs> a Venetian fat and lusty, that meets me soft and supple. Smiles upon me as if a cup of full wine leaped to kiss me. These slight things I've got now, they are ill built. And but like your dainty Ooh. barbers and wicked the pastors, they'll endure no hardness. Nothing <laughs> good or handsome bread amongst us till we have traveled. Now look abroad, we are coxcombs. Talk of France, that's like unseasoned country. And say we are great courtiers, and abuse us. We are wise and valiant too, not credos in York, our women. The best linguists? They are parents. Ha! Roma la Santa, Italy for my money. The courtesy is so open and so reserved too. The very pity speak more man than we do. Season up more song. Tim's a brave country, not pestered with your stubborn, precise puppies that turn all useful and allowed contentments into scabs and scruples. My hang on, cave and worshippers. I like that pretty well. well. And like the women, too, they do as others do, but I am so bashful, so naturally an ass. Look you, I can look upon you, 
very willingly I can go to see him. There's no man willing to end up in this room. Oh, you know that they chance to flout you or say you are too bold. Fies to remember I praise them further off. It is true. I am humble. I am gone and confess ingenuously. I am silent. Then would I sing and dance in charge her of the group. <laughs> oh, I can be hanged first. Yet, for I fasten well, I am a tyrant. Why? Thou darest fight and fight with any man and any weapon. With the other word, no more! Oh, but a promise on it. When I am sometimes in my height of hope and reason more valiant that way, my heart hardened, some scornful gesture other chops between me and my desire. But look, you must be bolder. Travel three years and bring home such a baby to betray you as bashfulness. A great fellow and a soldier. You have the gift of convenience. Oh. Thankful. Every man has not the like talent. I will study, and it may be revealed to me. Learn of me. <coughs> and of Penang. <laughs> Tell you'll find employment. Ladies would look for coach. It is but flashing, but standing one good brunt or two. Hast thou any mind to marriage who will provide him some soft natured wench? That's dumb too. Or an old woman that cannot refuse thee in charity. <laughs> a dumb woman, or an old woman, that were eager and cared not for discourse, I were excellent at. <laughs> you must not put on boldness. There's no avoiding it. They'll say, you went out like an ox. Return like an ass else. <laughs> I'm set for home now. I know it is to marry. And my father shall pardon me. I must not lose the freedom of a traveler. You strong, lusty bark not ride in one anchor. Tie me to one smock. Make my travels fruitless. I'm none of that. For every fresh behavior, by your leave, father, I must have a fresh new mistress. A fresh favor, too. I like that passively. As many as you will, so they each other. And even more gentle. There's no reason a gentleman and a traveler should be all clapped up for a manifest of the world's good thoughts. Tug ever like a rascal at one oar. Give me the Italian liberty that I study and that I will enjoy. Come, let's go in, gentlemen. There, mark how I behave myself. And follow. <laughs> <laughs> you and your beauteous daughters are most welcome. True, my blood. They are fair ones. Welcome, beauties. Welcome, sweet birds. I hope you have a mirror acquainted. That's my hope, too. You see them, they are no gypsies. For their breeding, it has not been so coarse that they are able to rank themselves as women of fair fashion. Indeed, they have been trained well. Thank you. Fit for the heirs of that state, I shall leave them. To say more is to say. <coughs> they say your son, now he has traveled, must be wondrous, curious, and choice in what he takes. These are the coarse ones. Sir, here's a fairy wench may chance to startle him. For all his care and travel caution, if he love gravity, affect a solemn face. There's one for me. So young and so demure. She's no often speaker, but when she does, she speaks well. Nor no reveler, yet she can dance, and has studied the court elements. And sings, as some say, handsomely. If a woman with the decency of her sex may be a scholar, I can assure you, sir, she understands, too. These are good garments, sir. Oh, thank them, that cut them. Yes, they are handsome women. They have handsome hearts, too. Oh, pretty becoming part. Tis like they have. Yes, yes, and handsome education they have had, too. Oh, had it abundantly. They need not blush at it. I thought it uh, all about you. Uh, you say well, sir. Oh, I know what I say, sir. And I say but right, sir. I am no trumpet of commendations before their father, else I should say farther. Pray you, what's this gentleman? One that lives with me, sir, a man 
well-bred and learned, the many fair gifts he has, in some of which he has handsomely bred up my girls. I think. Oh, I have bred it to him. That's my part. I have urged it. It seems they are ears now to take hold on it. <laughs> He's wondrous blunt. By my faith, that was a freedom of him. Does he not fall out with the gentlewomen sometimes? No, no, he's that way moderate in the streets. So. <laughs> if he did, we should be too hard for him. Oh, who else said it, Selfer? Too hard for thy husband's head if he wear not armor. Oh. Many of these bickerings, sir. I am glad they are no oracles. Sure as I live, <laughs> beats them himself. We said it. Well, if you do forget. Prithee, hold thy peace. Oh, thou art a pretty wench, I know thou lovest me. Observe it till we have a fit time to discourse on it, in a fit place. I answer, sir, with me you shall have nothing on these conditions. Your father and your friends. You are welcome home, sir. Bless you, you are very welcome. I know this gentleman and these fair ladies. <laughs> Monsieur Mirabel, I would much like to give your fair return, sir. I bring you service. These bright beauties, sir. Welcome home, <laughs> gentlemen. Welcome with all my heart. Your friend will have their share, too. Oh, sir, we hope they look upon us, although we show us strangers. Monsieur de Guard, I must salute you also. And this fair gentlewoman, you are welcome from your travel, too. All welcome, all. Uh, we render you our love, sir, and the best wealth we bring home. By a favor to you. One of these two, you know I mean it. Well, sir, they are fair and handsome, I must needs confess it. And let it prove the worst, I shall live after it. Whilst I have meat and drink, love cannot starve me. To marry, sir, you know I am an old man. And every hour to climb into my grave, one foot already in. <coughs> more sons I have, no more I dare not see from you are mine. In you lies all my hope and all my name. To make you good or wretched of my memory, to save you of my state. You have provided out of this tenderness, these handsome gentlemen, daughters to this rich man, to take my choice of. I have, dear son. It's true, you are old and feeble. But you are young again, and then fall bigger. Oh, the bounteous father's life, a long one. And I am none of those that when they shoot to ripeness, do what they can to bring the vows they grew on. Wish you many years and many riches, sir. For marriage, I neither yet believe in it nor affect it. You'll better be your reasons. You would have me marry a maid. A maid? What else? Yes. There would be things called widows. <laughs> Dead men <laughs> widows. I never love to prove those, nor never <laughs> long yet to be buried alive in another man's cold monument. And if a maid's appearing, it may be. The appearing. For fantastic things, mere shadows. And if you mark them well, then want their heads too. Only the world to cousin misty eyes has clapped them on new faces. And the maid's being a man may better on if you be so mad to marry. Let him take heed how we gather these too. But look, you father, they are just like melons. Now they are ripe, now cut them. They'll taste pleasantly. This present time and come tomorrow, they are so ripe, they are rotten, gone. My knees are now ripe, son. I'll try them presently. And if I like their taste. How do you please yourself, sir? That liberty is my due, not my taint. Lady, what think you of a handsome man now? A wholesome, too, sir? That's as you make your bargain. A handsome, wholesome man, then, and a kind man. To cheer your heart up, to rejoice you, lady. Yes, sir, I love rejoicing. <sighs> to lie close to you, close as a couple, keep the cold night. That will be looked for, too, our bodies asking. <laughs> <laughs> and get two boys at every birth. That's nothing. I've known a cobbler do it, a poor, thin <coughs> cobbler, a cobbler out of moldy cheese for more him. Thinks the gentleman to shape out floor to have an all out gave him <laughs> to and birth by every house of happen. You talk of two? <clears throat> she would have me get two dozen, like buttons at a birth. <laughs> you love to brag, sir. If you make these offers at your marriage, you are a pretty covert man. Take these. They may be taken hold of and expected, yes, if not hoped for, at a higher rate. 
I will take heed and thank you for your counsel. <laughs> Father, what think you? Just a merry gentlewoman. We'll make no doubt a good wife. Not for me. I marry her and happily get nothing. In what state am I then, Father? I shall suffer. I was sure to be a cuckold, Father. Oh, wait, oh, wait, fool. As I'm sure to fail her expectation, I'd rather get the pox than get her babies. You are much to blame. If this do not affect you, try the other. She is of a more to your I have the audacity to talk thus. I want that plain spoken gentlewoman I'm with her again. Sir, I can go as near to please her, downright doing. She has a perilous countenance. Shall have your will, sir, I will try the other. It will be of small use. I hope, fair lady, for me, thinks in your eyes I see more mercy. You will enjoin your lover a less penance. Good sir, speak louder. And these may witness too, you talk of nothing. <laughs>
grave character. He thinks the other, the homespoken gentlewoman that desires to be fruitful, that treats with the full management of the matter. But her well set on, she is affable, far but hound and right. And one to teach me, she speaks to the matter and comes home to the point. No, do I know I have such the volume to please her. All the kingdom cannot fit her I am sure of it. If I could but talk myself into her faith. That's easily done. It's easily said, but ever done. If I were virtuous, it would never grieve me for anything that might justify my modesty. But my nature is prone to do a charity. My calf's tongue you cannot help me. Go to him. I cannot but take it courteously. And I'll do my part. Though I'm sure it will be the hardest I ever played yet. The way I never tried to, which will stagger me. And if it do not shame me, I am happy. Win him and wear him. I give up my interest. But what say you, Monsieur Bellar? What I could say, or sing, or anything that were but handsome, I would be with her presently. Yours <laughs> is no wench. A merry, red wench. I'll be near thee. Pluck up thy heart, I'll second thee at all runs. Be angry if you view thee and beat her a little. Some women are one that way. Pray be quiet, let me think. I'm resolved to go on. How shall I get off her? I am persuaded. That will so please her, she'll go near to ravish thee. I want to come to that once. Let me pray a little. Now for thine honor it not. Born me this modesty, warm, but this frozen snowball. It will be a conquest, although I know thou art a fortunate venture, and hast done rarely in thy days. And all thy conquests. Are we ever near? At all necessities. And take thee off and set thee on again, boy. Oh, I know I was sick in the mire. How my heart throbs when I were drunk. Farewell, Cock. Heaven send us a joyful and merry meeting, man. Farewell and chew thy heart out. And remember, hello. They are but women. <laughs> I'd rather they were lions. <laughs> About it, I'll be with you instantly. No quiet for these creatures. I ordain to be devoured quick by these she cannibals. It's another day called handsome. I care not for her, but I ne'er look after her. And I'm half tippled, it may be, that I should turn her and peruse her. Oh, my want of women I might call for her. But to be haunted when I have no fancy, no maw to the matter. Now, oh, why do you follow me? If you remember you before your troubled uh, contract to be tied to me. It's my love, sir, that makes me seek you to confirm your memory. I come to give you thanks, too. For what, really? For that fair piece of honesty you show, sir, that constant nose. How? For I am short-headed. I'll tell you then. For refusing that free offer of Monsieur Nantelux, those two handsome beauties, I know it is for my sake. For your faith's sake, you slipped them off. Your honesty compelled you, and let me tell you, sir, it showed most handsomely. And let me tell thee, there was no such matter. <laughs> Nothing intended of that way, of that nature. I put him off because I loved him not. Not for thy sake, nor the contract's sake, nor vows, nor oaths. I made a thousand of them. Things indifferent, whether kept or broken. So let them know it again, for tis a justice and a main point of civil policy. Whatever we say or swear, we are cleared of all sides. Tis a curious blindness to believe us. You do not mean this, sure. I have no other positively as a principle. You are strange creatures and made of strange fires and fluxes, so we are allowed a strange way to do danger. You have told me other tales. Night after night. I have all sorts of tales for all sorts of women, and protestations likewise of all sizes. They are vanities to make us coxcombs. Do not you love me, then? As I love others, heartily I love thee. I am high and lusty, I love thee cruelly. After I have made a plenteous meal and satisfied my senses with all delicates, come to me. Thou shalt see how I love thee. Will not you marry me? No, no. no. <laughs> Certainly no, for anything I know yet. I must not lose my liberty, dear lady. What should I marry for? Do I want anything? 
Am I against the father from that heaven? Should I be a charge to keep a wife of my own? These are honest, married men to look easy. <coughs> well, thanks time now to remain in bed. Thou art cousin. Or if I were addicted to that night, can you tell me why I should have one? Thou art eighteen now, and if thou hast thy maiden head yet extant, sure, tis as big as a card's head. Those grave dishes I never love to deal with all. Dost thou see this book here? Look over all these ranks, all these are women, maids and pretenders to maiden heads. These are my conquests. <laughs> all these I swore to marry as I swore to thee. I enjoyed them if I will, and left them. Are you not ashamed, sir? No, by my troth, sir, there's no shame belongs to it. Are all my hopes come to this? Is there no faith, no trust, nor modesty in men? How now, sister? And sleeping thus, did I not prophesy? <coughs> come, tell me why. I am not well, are you dirty? Now, Monsieur Mirabel, what ails my sister? You have been playing the wag with her. As I take it, she is crying for a card piece. <laughs> Lord, what an age is this? I was calling for you, for as I live, I thought she would have ravished me. You are merry, sir. Thou knowest this book to guard, this inventory? Yeah, the dead book of your mistresses, I remember it. Why, this was it that angered her. She was stark mad, she found not her name in here, and cried down where I could come not pity her immediately, and put her in my lips. Be sure, she had more modesty. <laughs> Their modesty is anger to be overdone. And alas, I have so many to dispatch yet, to provide myself and my affairs too, that in Yeah, be not too glorious, foolish. Temper your speech, sir, whether your loose story be true or false, for you are so free, I fear it. Name not my sister, yes. I must not hear it upon your danger. Name her not. I hold her a gentlewoman of those happy parts and carriage. A good man's tongue would be right proud to speak her. Your sister, sir, do you blanch at that? Do you cavil? <coughs> do you hold her to such a peace that she may not be played with all? Not a hundred, handsomer and nobler, have sued to me too for such a courtesy. Your sister comes in the rear. <laughs> I believe you as I ever knew you, a glorious talker and a legend maker of idle tales and trifles, as a graver of your own truth, their honors fly about you. And so I take my leave, but with this caution, your sword be sure than your tongue. You'll smart else. I laugh at thee. Ha ha ha! Little, little, I respect thee. And thou talk louder and despise thy sister. Set up a chambermaid that shall outshine her. Oh, and carry her in thy coach. And that will kill her. You are a fine gentleman. Now I'll see how my two youths do, how they behave themselves. Then I'll study which wench shall love me next, and when I'll lose her. Thou art her servant, sayest thou? A poor creature, but servant to her horse, sir. Canst thou show me the way to her chamber? Nor where I may conveniently go to see her, or talk to her. But I can, sir. But the question is whether I will or not. Oh, well, I'll content thee. Why, well, I'll content thee, then. Now you come to me. There's your villain. There's her chamber, sir. And this way she comes out. Stand you but here, sir. You have read your cross pet. Marry your pleasure. Is she not very angry? He'll find that quickly. Maybe she'll call you a saucer. Scurvy fellow. Or some such familiar name. Maybe she know you. And will fling a his potash. Or a man talk for according to your charm acquaintance. If she like you, maybe she'll apply you. Maybe not. And two months hence, call for you. She is not just proud. Oh, she's a little haughty. Of a small body. She has a mind well now. Can you speak Greek? No, sir. Yet you're gone then. And talk of stars and firmaments and fire dreams. Do 
you remember who was Adam's schoolmaster and who taught Eve to spin? She knows all these and will run you over to the beginning of the world as familiar as a theme. Can you sit seven hours together and say nothing, which she will do? And when she speaks, speak oracles, speak things no man understands, nor herself either. <laughs> now it makes me wonder. Can you smile? Yes, willingly, for naturally I bear mirth about me. She'll marry Mary then. <laughs> She's never married. If she see one laugh, she'll swoon past Aqua Vitae. <laughs> never come near her, sir. If you chance to venture and talk not like a doctor, you are damned too. I have told you enough for your crown. So good to you. <laughs> if I fall off now, I should be laughed at fearfully. If I go forward, I can but be abused in that I look for, and yet I may get right, but tis unlikely. Oh, stay. In what mood and figure shall I attempt her? A careless way? No, no, that will not lead to her. Besides, her gravity will give me lines still and let me lose myself. Yet, this way often has hit and handsomely. In a wanton method? I she give at least a slip into her consideration, but there's the doubt. If it stir her blood once, whoo, set her a cop. But if you chance to slight it by the power of her modesty, fling it back, I shall appear the arrantest rascal to her, the most licentious knave, for I shall talk lewdly. Though to bear myself all stealing, rage my words, and fling a general gravity about me as if I meant to give laws, but this I cannot do. This is a way above my understanding, or if I could, as I shall think I mock her, for serious and sad things are ever still suspicious. <laughs> well, I'll say something. But learning I have none and less good manners, especially for ladies. <sighs> well, I'll set my best face. <laughs> Here's some coming. This is the first woman I have ever feared yet, the first face that shakes me. This is she sure? The very same I saw, the very woman, the gravity. I wonder that. Stay. Stay. Summer is in her face, and she skipped it. I'll go a little nearer. Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm amazed. I am foundered in my fancy. Ha! Huh. Say you so. Is this your gravity? I'll see more of the sport. A song now, calling for a merry and a light song. Yes, madam. Let's walk ourselves. Would we had a man or two? Oh, oh sure, she is fine. You will abuse me dreadfully. She is put on this for the purpose. And I will try her. Madam, I would be loath my rude intrusion, which I must crave a pardon for. But oh, you are welcome. You are very welcome, sir. We want such a one. I dare presume you dance well. Quick, quick, sir, quick, the time seals off. No, I will talk with you. Talk as you dance. She'll beat him off his legs first. <laughs> one, two, three, five! <laughs> I work. 
her up again, I smell my misery. I was never put to this rack. I shall be drunk, too. <laughs> well, be it's not a right one, I've lost my name much. Thank heaven that I've escaped you. <laughs> to her cannot, for thou art sure to have her, and to groan for her. <laughs> <laughs> See how I <laughs> Then, leave me in the 
sons, no, I'm false hearted this way. I beseech you, good sweet Maribel, I'll cut your throat if you leave me. Indeed I will, sweetheart. <laughs> will be ever near. I know. Take a man's heart to me and speak thy mind. The plainer still the better. That free behavior, indeed that common courtesy, do not deny me. Go bravely on. Madam, keep close about me, still at my back. Madam, sweet madam. Ha, what noise is this? What saucy sound you trouble me? What said she? I am saucy. <laughs> <laughs> she comes. Must I be saucy still? Or <laughs> saucy? <laughs> still troubled with these vanities? Heaven bless us, what are we born to? Would you speak with any of my people? Go in, sir, I am busy. This is not she, sure. Is this two children out of breath? I'll be hanged then. Mine was a merry gentlewoman, talked daintily, talked of those matters that befitted women, and now I am to look too. I was prepared for the other way. Do you know that man? Sure, I have seen him, lady. Methinks his pity such a lusty fellow should wander up and down in one's employment. She takes me for a rogue. You may do well, lady, to stay this wanderer and set him for loot, set him at work, forsooth. He can do something that may. Please your ladyship. I know women <laughs> desire good greetings, too, at birth or so. A fellow's indeed, sure, he is graced. This is want of great grace indeed. Tis great pity the young man has been bred so ill. Uh, but this lewd age is full of such examples. I am found. <laughs> ha! So bookish lady is it possible? Turn holy in the heart, too. I'll be hanged then. Such vast and loose talk. Well, what do you take me for, sir? A hypocrite, a wanton, a dissembler. How you seem, and thus you are to be handled. Mark me below, and this you love, I know. Stand off, old sir. All this to draw on fools. And thus, thus, lady, you are to be loved. Let her alone. I'll swing you out. I will, in faith, for though I cannot skill this matter myself, I will not have another go before me, and do it worse. Away, you are a vain thing. You speak of women that are not worth the favor of a common one. Against a thousand such blown fooleries, I am able to maintain good women's honors, their freedoms, and their fame. She is almost struggling dumb, too. And I will declaim against your base, malicious tongues, your noises, for they are nothing else. You teach us behavior, or touch us for our freedoms. Teach yourselves manners, truth, and sobriety, and live so clearly that our lives may shine in you. And then task us. I am sorry to see this. Think, sir, think fairly. Oh, this woman, if she hold on, may be virtuous. It's almost possible we'll have a new day. You've set me on. you brought me to this foolery. I am shamed. I am scorned. I am flirted, yes, I am so. Though I cannot talk to, talk to a woman like your worship, yet I can fight with any man. Fight! I can, sir, and I will fight. With whom? With you. With, with any man. For all men now will laugh at me. Prithee, be moderate. I will beat you. I'll beat you dearly. I will beat all that love. Love has undone me. And I'll begin with you first. <laughs> Pray, I do not satisfy no, you. No, look, you do. I must beat someone I know <coughs> myself. I ought in anger and no, no, no. Your cousin. But walk? Let me talk to thee? Talk wisely. And see that no man laugh upon no occasion, for I shall think them to in me. I warrant thee, nor no more talk of this. Dost think I am maddish? I must needs fight yet, for I find it concerns me. A pox on I will go fight. Uh, I know you are a scholar and can do wonders. Oh, there's no great scholarship belongs to this, sir. What I am, I am. Oh, I pity your poor sister. And heartily, I hate these travelers. There's nothing in their houses here but mummies. A bee has more brains. I grieve and vex too the insolent, licentious carriage of this 
outfacing fellow, Mirabelle, then I am mad to see him prick his plumes up. Now, with his wrongs you partly know. Oh, since he has begun with wit, let wit revenge it. Keep your sword close. We'll cut his throats a new way. I will be ruled, he shall live, and left to your revenge. Oh, I, I, I'll get him. He makes a common scorn of halves of women. He takes up maidenheads with a new commission. The church warrants out of debt. Follow my counsel, for I am zealous in the cause. I will, sir, and will be still directed. The truth is, my sword will make my sister seem more monstrous. Oh, you are in the right, sir. The slight has shown my beautiful sense. Me a fire, too. Go, I'll prepare your sister, and as I uh, Yes, you, sir, all shall be fit. Oh, most thank you. See that observed, and then... I have you everywhere. Go, away then! With all speed, sir. <sighs> Good day, fair beauties. We thank you, sir. You have set us off most gallantly with your brave precepts. We expected husbands, excellent husbands, out of your documents and top behaviors. Thought men would front start bad on us, men of all ages and all states. Thought we would have a torrent of trip suitors. All we did or said or proposed to be spells about us. We followed your directions. We did rarely. We were stately, coy, demure, light, careless, giddy, and played at all points. This, you swore, would carry. <laughs> we made love and condemned love, now seemed holy with such a reverent put on reservation that could not this, according to your principles, now gave more hope, now close, now public. Still we beat it up and down like a billow, but all this will not help us. It's helped to hinder us of all acquaintance. It has frightened off all friends. What good am I for all my learning if I love a dunce? A handsome dunce. You are not mad, sure. We shall be if we follow your encouragement. I'll take my own way now, and I my fortune. We may live maids, else till the moon drop mills. Oh, since you take it so to the heart, pray you give me leave yet, and you shall see how I'll convert this heretic. Mark you how this mirror Name shall... him no more. I hate him, and will be sooner married to a monkey or a jack of straw than such a juggler. <laughs> I am of that mind, too. <laughs> Here's what we love well would be angry. A reason why. No, no, we will not bother you nor him at this time. We'll turn ourselves loose to our fair fortunes in the downright way. The winning way will follow. We'll bait that men may fight fair and not be fretted. Yet we'll not be carried so cheap neither. We'll have some mad Morris or sport for our money tutor. Tis like enough! Go prosper your own devices. You are old enough to choose, but for this young gentlewoman, pray, please give me leave. I shall be glad, sir, to find a friend whose pity may direct me. Oh, I'll do my best and faithfully deal for you. But you must be ruled. Do, do. He has a lucky hand sometimes, I assure you, and hunts the recovery of a lost lover deadly. Shh! You must away, straight. Yes. And I'll instruct you. By your leave, sweet ladies, in all our fortunes arrive at our own wishes. Amen, amen. Oh, I must borrow your man. Pray take him. He is within. To do her good, take anything. Take us and all. Oh, no doubt you may find takers. Uh, now we shall leave you. Go to your own devices. Now which way, wench? We'll take a brave way. Fear not, a safe and a sure way. And yet a byway, for I have a great mind to be married. So have I too of grudging the goodwill that way? And would as fain be dispatched? Panachmi thinks is reasonable. A little modesty he has brought home with him, and might be taught in time some hands of duty. They say he is a wetcher, too. A free light toucher, too, becomes a gentleman. <laughs> and sets him seemly off, so he exceed not to keep his compass clear. He may be looked at. I would not marry a man that must be talked and conjured up with kisses. The best game is still played by the best gamesters. Spy upon thee, what talk hast thou? Are we not alone and merry? May we not speak what we think? Thy gentleman, the tall, fat fellow, he that came to see thee. Is not a goodly man? A wondrous goodly. Has weight enough, I warrant thee. My 
my, what a serpent wilt thou seem under such a St. George. You are a fool. Give me a man drinks metal. These little fellows show like fleas in boxes and hop up and down and keep a stir to vex us. Give me the fleas in pipe. Take you the small shot. <laughs> Of a great thing, I have not seen a dollar. Peace. He is modest, a bashfulness, which is a point of great wench. But as these fellows come to molding, to heat and handling, as I live, I like him, and methinks I can form him. Peace, the fire drink. Bless you, sweet ladies, sweet incomparable beauties, sweet wits, sweet humors. Bless you, learned lady, and you most holy nun. Bless you, devotion. <laughs> and bless your brains, sir, your most tempted brains. They are in travail. May they be delivered of a most hopeful wild goose. Bless your manhood. They say you are a gentleman of action, a fair accomplished man, and a rare engineer. You have a trick to blow up maiden heads. I have, lady. I have a speedy trick. Please you to try it. My engine will dispatch you instantly. <laughs> I would I were a woman fit for you, sir, as there be such an may doubt engine you too, and with a countermine, know of your valor. <laughs> but alas, sir, we cannot be persuaded. For look you, if we thought we were a glory to be the last of all your lovely ladies. Come, come, leave praise. This has spoiled your market. The oh, whole, the more our pain, sir. The more our health, I hope, too. Behaviors, I mean, men stand amazed. Those men that love you, and the fair states and parts, your scorns of those that came to visit you, your <coughs> studied whimwams, your fine set on faces. What of those not? Proud and harsh opinions. Pray you proceed, sir. Now you shall see in what esteem a traveler and understanding gentleman and a monster is to be held. <coughs> to your griefs confess it both to your griefs and gods. In what, I pray you, sir, you would be glad to understand your excellence? Go on, sweet lady. It becomes you rare. You, lady learned. Note the poor traveler that came to visit you. You may chance to see him anon. Tis very likely. And see him courted by a traveled lady, held dear and honored by a virtuous virgin. Be a beauty not far short of yours, neither it may be clearer. Tis not unlikely. Younger, as killing eyes as yours, a wit as poignant. <laughs> a state, too, that may top your fortune. Inquire how she thinks of him, how she holds him, his good parts. What a precious price already. Inquire of this, and keep your chamber. Cry and burst. Sweet one, thousand and yearly then. Well bred, well friended, traveled, and uh, highly followed for her fashions. Bless his good fortune, sir. The scurvy fellow, I think they call his name uh, Pinot. The serving man that brought you venison, as I take it, madam, note but the scab. Good sir, I grieve not at him, nor envy his fortune. Oh, would I have his fortune? What is a woman of that sweet tempered nature? That judgment beside her state, that care, clear understanding, and such a wife to bless him. Pray, sir, whence is she? Of England, and a most accomplished lady, so modest that men's eyes are frightened at her, and such a noble carriage. Oh, how now, Sir Ross? Sir, the great English lady. What of her, sir? Has newly left her coat and coming this way where you may see her place, since you're not the only man that leaves her. Oh, he is much honored. Would I had such a favor? How vex, lady, envy, and vex, and rail. Bless your fair fortune, sir. I nobly thank you. Is she married, friend? No, no. Oh, a sweet and delicate aspect. Mark, mark, and wonder. Hast thou any hope of her? A little. Ooh. Marlo, close then. It was not that hope. Gentle lady. She is fair indeed. I have seen her fair, yet she is well. Her clothes fit handsome too. She dresses prettily. And she is rich, and I dare say still sweeter. She is a goodly woman. Do you hear, sir? May I crave this gentlewoman's name? Mariana, lady. I cannot say I owe you a quarrel, Monsieur, for making me your stale. A noble gentleman would have had more courtesy, or at least more faith, 
you my charge. I am beholding to you for all your merry tricks you put upon me. I came to love you, to woo you, and to serve you. I am much indebted to you for dancing me off my legs and then for walking. Be not so bitter, sir. You see this lady. She is young enough and fair enough to please me. A woman of a loving mind, a quiet, and one that weighs the work in the bus. I am content with this, and it was my fortune. Babe, see me once more. I dare not trouble you. May I speak to your lady? I pray you, content yourself. I know you are bitter, and in your bitterness you may abuse her, which, if she comes to know, before she understands you not, you may breathe such a quarrel to your kindred and such an indiscretion will not be too. Eat her. <laughs> Rest as you are, a modest, noble gentleman. What think you now? Faith, she's a pretty winning. She has a pretty patch, too. Oh, you are angry, monstrous angry now, grievously angry. And the pretty heart does swell now. No, in trust. And it will cry it on, a pox upon it, and it will sigh. Indeed, if you are mistaken, it will be very merry. <laughs> Why, sir, do you think there are no more men living, nor none handsomer than he? Or you, by this light there be ten thousand, ten thousand thousand. <laughs> Come for yourself, dear Monsieur. Faces and bodies, wits and all the villains, there be so many we regard not. So far above such trifles. Oh, you did laugh at me, and I know why you laughed. Sir, I pray you be satisfied. If we did laugh, we had some rather reason, and not at you. Alas, we know you not, sir. I'll make you know me. Stand this way and look sad. I'll be no man. Sadder, demure yet. What's the matter? What ails this gentleman? Off now back with them and behold you, and not a simper on your old lives. He's mad, sir. Do you observe me too? I meant to look on you. But why do you grin? I know your mind. No mirth, nor pleasure, but you must be the object. Mark and observe me. Wherever I am named, the very words shall cast a general sadness for the, dis the disgrace this scurvy woman did me. This proud, pert thing. Take heed, you laugh not at me. Provoke me not, take heed. I would fain please you, do anything to keep you quiet. Hear me. Until I receive the satisfaction equal to the disgrace and scorn you gave me, you are a wretched woman. Till thou wooest me, and I scorn thee as much, I seriously jeer and abuse thee. Nay, hey, sir, be more modest. <laughs> Why do you laugh again? Because you are a woman, you are lawless, and I'm a compass of a modest anger. Pray, pray, sir, have a better belief of me. Away, dear sister. It's not better now, this seeming madness, than falling out with your friends. Are not frighten her? Into her right wits, I warn thee. Follow this humor, and thou wilt see how prosperous things may guide thee. I'm glad to hear that I will make a civil suitor. I was afraid once I never would have made one. Well, how about it still? Do, do, and prosper. What sport do I make with these fools? What pleasure feeds me and pats my sides at their poor innocence? Wooing and wiving, hang it! Kippy mirth, witty and tainty mirth. <laughs> this to me, sir, what youth is this? I will speak with you if your name be <coughs> Monsieur Mirabel. You have hit it, sir. Your business, I beseech you. There is a gentlewoman <coughs> hath long time affected you and love you dearly. Turn over and end that story. Tis long enough. Uh -huh. I have no faith in women, sir. It seems so. Oh, I have not come to woo her or sing her praises, <laughs> though she well deserve them. I have come to tell you, you have been cruel to her. Cruel and unkind, false with faith and careless and <laughs> Which, as you are a man, I must desire you, a, a gentleman of rank, not to persist. Why, I beseech you, sir, oh, there is a, a nobleman, new come to town, sir, a noble, a great man that affects, sir, a countryman of mine, nephew to the duke, and a brave Savoyan. So much honor, sir, that it will be dangerous to pursue your old way. Believe, most dangerous. Your name is Oriana, 
and this Lord will marry her. <laughs> Take heed, sir, for howsoever her brother, a staid gentleman, lets things pass upon better hopes. This man is of that fiery and poignant metal that could be hard. Oh, but you are wise. Lord, sir. Yes, and a noble lord. Send her good fortune. Oh, this will not stir her, lord. A baron, saying so, saying so. My lady, a brave title. Poor servant of hers, I must confess, sir, but basta. Now I know my rules and my distance. Yet if she wanted an usher, such an implement, one that is thoroughly paced, a clean made gentleman, I do beseech you, sir. Sir, I think you're scoffing. And as a gentleman, deal fairly. I have given you a friend's counsel. And so I will leave you. Is it possible I may believe what you say? Oh, you may choose, sir. No baits, no fish hooks, sir. No gins, no nooses, no pitfalls, and that puppy. No, oh, you may believe. If not, stand to the danger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, whoa! 
what a purblind puppy was I. Now I remember him, how he strutted about, and what a low lord he clapped upon him. Would I had him here again. I would so bounce him. I would so thank his lordship for his blue plot. Come, is he again. He comes, he comes, he comes. Have at him. My Savoy lord. And will that favor never sweeter be? Wilt thou, I say, forever play the fool? To God be wise, and Savoy go to school, and so I take my humble leave of your heart. <laughs> we are discovered. <laughs> now, there's no remedy. Lily of Bianca's man upon my life in stubbornness because Lugier corrected me. I was in perfect hope. The faith on it is now he will make Merc on Merc to persecute us. Now we must be patient. I'm vexed to the proof, too. I'll try once more. Then if I fall, here's what speaks. Let me be lost and scorned first. Yeah, well, we'll consider. <laughs> Away, let me shift. I shall be hooted else. Well, well, well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Names and wenches, I have come bearing an important message. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming tonight. We are about to begin a short ten-minute intermission break. And please, help support Shakespeare on the lawn by donating in this hat right here. In ten minutes, you all shall see my master plan unveiled. <laughs> Uh, it's fun. 
I mean, like, I definitely, like, I keep having these dreams where I'm seeing that and I'm like, I'm going to have to come back. But other than that, like, it's not easy. I wish my Instagram. Yeah. It could be better, but, you know, I feel like, how are you? I'm just Yeah. Oh, you're nearing the end.
kick as men's fair services. A self-willing and woman chained to an overweening thought is pestilent. I cannot grieve of my ignorance. For sure, sir, if my chance had been so happy as to have arrived at you, I should have eased you, have made you as much wonder at my love and in courtesy as I have disheartened you. Being freeborn maids, we take a liberty, and to maintain that, sometimes we strain high. Now you talk reason. But being yoked and governed, married and those light vanities purged from us, we twine about those loves that shoot up with us. A solid woman fear that talks not to you. She has a sad and darkened soul, loves dumbly. A merry and free wench, give her liberty. Believe her in the lightest form that she appears to you. Let when these fits and flashes pass, she'll show to you as jewels rubbed from dust or gold new burnish. Such had I been had you believed. It's impossible. I admire thee, now I'm sorry that I came beyond it. I so dare not hurt you, and yet, dear sir. No, it is most certain. I rather, for in my own choice, for you're my countrywoman, a neighbor, you're born by me. She's a stranger. <laughs> Do as you please, sir. If you be fast, not all the world. I love you. Go, the gift before me. <laughs> so much have you won upon me. Do it presently. Here is a priest ready. I'll have you. I pray you proceed, sir. I dare not hinder your most high preferment. Tis honor enough for me. I have unmasked you. How's that? I have caught you, sir. Alas, I am no stateswoman, nor no great traveler, yet I have found you. I have found your lady, too, your beauteous lady. I have found her birth and breeding, her discipline, what virtuous nunnery received her in. I have found all these. Are you blank now, meaning such excellent indiscretions? How did you know this? Tis true. She's English-born, but most part French now. And so I hope you will find her to your comfort. Alas, I know not what she cost you. Those jewels are the brokers. How you stand bound for them? Will you make this good? Yes, yes, and to her face, sir, that she's an English whore. <laughs> Came over in thin pumps and half a petticoat. She was first a lady's chambermaid, there slipped and broke her leg above the knee. Departed, set up shop for herself, there lost her colors, and last shipped over hither. I pray you proceed. The wedding will become you. Who gives this lady? You. An excellent father, a careful man, and one that knows of beauty. Be wise and manly, then I may chance to love you. <laughs> As I live, I am ashamed. This wench has reached me. It's monstrous is shame. There's no remedy. Come, come, on case. If you have no more use for thee, your clothes must back again. Oh. <laughs> uh, sir, you shall pardon me. It's not our English used to be degraded. If you will visit me and take your venture, you shall have pleasure for your profit. And so. Manners, but curtsy again, hold your countenance, Stacy. 
Look on me steadfastly, and whatsoever I say to you, move not, nor alter in your face, you are gone then. For if you do express the least distaste, or conjure an angry wrinkle, I will so conjure thee. The third part of my execution will, then cannot be spoken. I am at your disposal, sir. Now rise, and wound me a little. Let me hear that faculty, but touch me not, nor do not lie, I charge you. Begin now. If so mean and poor beauty may ever hope the grace You cog, you flatter, like a lewd thing you lie. May hope that grace? Why? <laughs> what grace canst thou hope for? Answer not, for if thou dost and liest again, I'll swing thee. I am counseled, sir. Is it not for our bounty that we take you, they were troubled, vexed, or tortured with you? Yes. Our pity, that for your wickedness we swing you soundly, for your stubbornness and your stout hearts we belabor you, answer to that. I do confess your pity. Is it not for your own persons, thou impudent, thou pertinent? Do not change your countenance. I do not, sir. Or if you do. I am settled. Oh, wagtail, peacock, puppy, look at me. I am a gentleman. It seems no less, sir. It was my weakness I did not view you. I took not notice of your noble parts, nor cold your person, nor your proper fashion. This is some men's yet. And I will bend, sir, daily and study to deserve. Come a little nearer. Canst thou repent thy villainy? Most seriously. And be ashamed? I am ashamed. Cry. <laughs> Cry instantly, cry seriously, as if thou had lost thy monkey, and as I like my tears. Now! <laughs> Why do you 
baked me? It's not a shame you are so stubborn-hearted, so stony, and so dull to such a lady. Does she not love you? Does not her distraction for your sake only, her most pity lunacy of all but you show you? Oh, does it not compel you? Why not a boat? It is this glory that you can kill beauty. You bear my stamp, but not my tenderness. Show something of a man, of a fair nature. You make me mad. You take a strange felicity in slighting and wronging women, which my poor sister feels now. Mark me, sir, that very hour she dies, and there's small hope otherwise, you and I must grapple for it, either your life or mine. Be not so hot, sir. I'm not to be wrought on by these policies, and true, I am not. Nor do I fear the tricks or the high-sounding threats of a Savoyan. Oh. Glory not in cruelty, you wrong me. I see cause I can both do and suffer, freely and feelingly, as a true gentleman. Oh, pity, pity, a thousand, thousand pities. Alas, poor soul, she will die, she is grown senseless. Die for love, and love of such a youth. I die for a dog first, let it be him that killed me. You've done a worthy act, sir, a most famous. You killed a man the wrong way. You're a conqueror. Out kidlings, what caterwaulings here, what jiving? Show me some reason. Oh, hear that, here's a reason. <laughs> now, if you be a man, let this sight shake you. Alas, poor gentlewoman, you know me, lady. I know you very well. You are my godfather, and, and that's the minister. And, and, and who am I? You, sir, are a maddest to call. Oh, oh my heart. You never in love, sweet lady, and do you never dream of flowers and gardens? Who's that? Pray, stand away. I have seen that face, sure. Oh, how light my head is. Take some rest. I must be up tomorrow to go to church, and I must dress me with my new gown on, and he is fine to meet my love. Hi-ho, will not you tell me where my love lies buried? He's my tent. Oh, my heart, she stirs me. He is dead to me. Is it but possible my nature should be so damnable to let her suffer? Give me your hand. How soft you feel, how gentle. I'll tell you your fortune, friend. She stares on me. I warrant you may have a hundred sweethearts. Will you pray for me? I shall die tomorrow. I am most unworthy, I do confess, unhappy. Do you know me? I would, I did. With your tears, how you take me? Do you mean to? You have not lost your lover. You mock me, I'll go home and pray. Pray you pardon me. Or if it consider you to do justly, scorn me, for I deserve it. Scorn me, shame me, sweet Oriana. Let her alone, she trembles. Her fits will grow more strong if you provoke her. Certainly she knows you're not. She loves to see you. Where are you? Oh, why do you not laugh? Such a ridiculous subject as I am. God, put off this lightness. It's no time for mirth nor place. I tell myself in a sweet lady by being too indulgent to my foolery. She truly I repent. Look here, Miller. What ails she? Alas, she is mad. Dost thou wonder at that? By this good light, they are also, they are cousining mad, they are brawling mad, they are proud mad. Is she dead, dost thou? Dead? Heaven forbid. I would further it. Will they see fertility, keyhole dead? Their graze is chap fallen, their tongues at peace, nailed in their coffins, sure I'll never believe them. Shall I talk? No. <laughs> you please be quiet. Give peace a while. I'll walk aside and come again and on. But take heed to her. You say she is a woman? Yes. Take great heed. Let her be mad or what she will. She'll cheat thee. Away, wild fool! Phyla shows it me now. Now take my faith. For you while I speak it. My repentant love. This seems well. Where could this lady clear again? Sorrows my very heart melts for. She 
she but perfect, but thus to marry her now would be two miseries. She's the richest and the noblest beauty France or all the world can show me. She now is my tears and prayers shall wet her. This made some small amends. Oh. <laughs> she comes to see way. you and to us too to go off. Let's draw aside. Till then. 
then, dear sir, I'll amble all the world over so I escape the dangerous thing of matrimony. Are you resolved? Yes, certain. How about again? We are for you, sir. We are your servants once more. Once more, we'll seek our fortune in strange countries. Ours is too scornful for us. There narrow land that you have read or heard of where there are no women, nor <laughs> have been ever, nor no mention of such lewd things with lewder qualities. For thither when I travel where tis felony to confess he had a mother. Are you for travel too? For living in the moon and stopping hedges, ere I stay here to be abused and baffled. Why did you not break your minds to me? They are my daughters, and sure, I think I should have that command over them to see them well bestowed. I know you are gentlemen, men of fair parts and states. I know your parents. And had you told me of your fair affections? Make but one trial more, and let me second you. Will you lend me an armor of high proof then to appear in? And two or three field pieces to defend me? <laughs> yes, and you too, and twenty fatter ones yours. Come, shall we go? Uh, you cannot be so discourteous if you intend to go and not to visit them and take your leaves. That we dare do, and civilly, and thank them too. Yes, sir, we know that honestly. I'll come in the rear, forty foot off, I assure you, a good gun in my hands. Oh, no more Amazons! I mean, no more of their frights. You are a merry gentleman. <laughs> a wary gentleman, I do assure you. I've been warned, and I must be armed. Well, son, these are your hasty thoughts. When I see you are bent with them, I believe, and join with you. So we'll leave you. <laughs> there is a trick that will make you stay. <laughs> no. We have won immortal fame now if we leave them. You have, but we have lost. Oh, I know they love you, but to gain you handsomely, not to be thought to yield, they would give millions. If I thought so. You shall be hanged, you recreant. Will you turn on a god now? No, but away, boys. Though I were married to that grasshopper and had her fast by the legs, I should think she would present. Uh, you must remain about, I take it? You're in the right, sir. I have come to see you, sir. I have been at your father's, and understanding that you are here, I came May I crave your name, sir? Fossey, sir, and your servant. That you may know me better, I am factor to your old merchant, Le Verdure. No! Oh. How does he? Well, sir, I hope. He is now at Orleans about some business. You are once more welcome. The master's a right honest man, and one I am much beholding to. And must very shortly trouble his love again? You may be bold, sir. Your business, if you please, now. I know you well remember in your travels a gentleman merchant. I remember many. But this man, sir, particularly one Alberto, a gentleman you saved from being murdered a little from Bologna. I was then myself in Italy and supplied you, though I'm happily you have forgotten. Oh, no, I remember you. <laughs> and that Alberto, too, a noble gentleman. More to remember were to thank myself, sir. What of that gentleman? He's dead. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. But on his deathbed, leaving to his sister all that he had, besides some certain jewels, which with the ceremony he bequeathed to you in grateful memory, he commanded strictly his sister, as she loved him and his peace, to see those jewels safe and true delivered. She, as tender to observe this will, trusting neither friend nor servant, with such a weight, is come herself to Paris. You, you, tell me a wonder. I, I tell you the truth, sir. <laughs> she is young and handsome and well attended, of much state and riches. May not I see her? She desires it heartily. And presently? She is now about some business, passing accounts of some few debts here. <coughs> she wealthy. Her brother has a main state. And fair too. The prime of all those parts of Italy, for beauty and for courtesy. I must needs see her. You may now see her, but tomorrow will be better for your visitation, for she's not yet prepared. Only her sight, sir. And when you shall think fit for further visits. Sir, you may see her, and I will 
I'll wait for that. Meantime, my love. Thank you, sir. Your poor service. Woohoo! <laughs> thou hast the strangest luck. What was that, Alberta? An honest, noble merchant. Twas my chance to rescue him from some rogues that almost slain him. Thank you, kindness, to remember this. And now we have you find out strange fortunes in this lady's eyes and new enticements to put you off on a journey. No, no, never fear it. I must needs see her to receive my legacy. And if it be tied up in her smart heaven, help me. <laughs> May not we see too? Yes, up all we go. Wouldst thou see more women? Oh, you have been out of love with all. I may be, yet I desire to see whether all countries are naturally possessed with the same spirits. Well, well, I'll meet you anon, and then tell you more, boys. However, ten prepare to rest for our journey. Go, go, we'll wait for you. Your fortune directs us. You can find us in the tavern, lamenting in sack and sugar for our losses. If she be right Italian and desires servants, you may want the properest man or worry with me now. Come, come, leave the fray. You may have enough to do without this person. Oh, this is the last adventure, and the happiest as we hope to. We shall be glad to find it. Who shall conduct us thither? Oh, your man is ready, for I must not be seen. That way we get suspicion. <laughs> come, look not pale. You shall not lose your wishes, nor beg of neither. But be yourselves and happy. I tell you true, I cannot hold off longer, nor give no more hard words. I love the gentleman, and must now show it. Shall I, shall I be a proper man out of heart? There's none advises you. I'll tell what I think. For if he asks now if I can love him, I'll tell him, yes, I can. Though he played the fool, which I requited, must I still hold him as tame sad? All of what this advice I have set you in now, and if you lose, would you yield now so basely? Keep up without your honor, save, preserve your freedom still. Well, well, for this time, come, direct us. I have no doubt we shall do well. Do well. I'll honor you.
she shall, ladies. Come, pray you, come up. Oh, me. Hang me if I knew her. Were I man myself, I should not love you. I dare not trust mine eyes, for as I live, you are the strangest altered. I must come up to know the truth. So must I, lady, for I am in kind of unbelieving virtue. <laughs> Get you gone, Sarah, and what you have seen be secreted. No pay else, no more her long tongue. Will you go in, ladies, and talk with her? His ventures will come straight. There, Sarah, go, misfort you. I would the trunk of woman would go with me. <laughs> <laughs> Is she so glorious, handsome? You would wonder. How could it look like gypsies, like gills to her? Ah, but how looks her face? Most handsomely. The coming motion of her body so sets her off. Why, then we shall stay. Pardon me, that's more than I know. If she be that woman she appears to be, I shall then tell you more. Did you speak to her? Now I go for that end. And mark her, gentlemen, if she appear not to you, one of the sweetest the handsomest, the fairest in behavior. We shall meet the two wenches there, too. They come to visit her to wonder as we do. Then we shall. Oh, I'd rather meet two bears. Oh, there you may go. Dispatch that business. And if you find their cure. No, has your love there, too. No. I'm certain she has no great heart to set out again. I'll take your great heart. And well, no, they are come in. Sit you two off as strangers. There, lady. Where is the boy? Sirrah, be ready. They enter. How rich she is. My married miss shows bravely. Oh, she is a lusty wench in there, Lord, a good man. There sits my fury. How I shame to see her! <laughs> Madam, this is the gentleman. How oh, sweet she kisses! She has a spring dwells on her lips of paradise. This is the legacy. Most noble, sir, this from my now dead brother, as his love and grateful memory of your great benefits. From me, my thanks, my wishes, and my service. Till I am more acquainted, I am silent. Only I dare say this, you are truly noble. <sighs> what should I think? If you have a handsome fortune. You are well met, gentlemen. We hear you are for travel. Well, you hear true ladies, and come to take our leave. Full along with you. We see you grown so witty by your journey, we cannot choose but step out too. This lady we mean to wait upon as far as Italy. We'll travel into Wales amongst the mountains. I hope they cannot find me. If you can go farther, we'll jog along too. Are you so valiant, lady? And we'll be married, sir, and laugh. Maybe we'll go by sea. Why, tis the only voyage. I love a sea voyage and a blustering tempest, and let all slips. Ooh, it's a dainty damsel. I think she will pay you. Can you ride post? Oh, excellently. I am never weary that way. <laughs> I'll travel on the ground. Do you hear, sweet lady? I find it would be rather difficult for a woman. No danger, I warrant. I love to be under. <laughs> but say we pass through Germany and drink hard. We'll learn to drink in spider too. She'll beat me, lady on the home. And I'll and I'll live with thee, and we'll keep house together. I go for Turkey, and so it may be into Persia. We cannot know too much. I'll along with you. And you'll abuse me? Like enough. This dainty. Oh, the body comes. How dare come see me? You say I was supposed to hang myself. There I'll leave you. <laughs> I'm glad to know how to avoid you. Ah, uh, may I speak yet? Lady, you wish I knew to recompense even with the service of my life those pains and those high favors you have thrown upon me. Noblest of women, do me but this favor to accept this back again, sworn testimony. They must have you, too, with them. Else the will that says they must rest with you is infringed, sir. Take me, then, and take me with the truest love. My brother loved you dearly, and I ought as dearly to preserve that love. But, sir, 
So I work willing, these are but your ceremonies. As I live, I speak the truth. Marry you immediately, a fair state, I dare promise you. Would some fair gentleman durst promise for you? By all that's good, I will make up the rest, lady. <coughs> then Oriana. Who owns? <laughs> Thank you. I'm pleased you have deceived me, and willingly I swallow it, enjoy it. And yet, perhaps I knew you. <laughs> Who's thought of this? Oh, he's not ashamed of that casket. <clears throat> he that executed followed your father's will. Father? What a world's this? Nothing but craft and cousinage. Who begun? Well, do you take me upon mere compassion? And I do think I shall love you. It's a testimony I'll burn my book and turn a new leaf over. <laughs> so I close you to it still. I obey you, sir, in all. <laughs>
wonderful, wonderful group of people. Um, so I think you want to run that quote. We have a, just a very, very, very strong list of people. Um, <laughs> You're lucky I didn't take off this So the first person we need to thank, uh, who's actually not here, um, is Carlos Andre, who's coming in. She did a lot of work into publicizing the show um, in lots of ways that we haven't done before. So I know she's not here, but people are going to tell her that we clap, so if you give a round of applause. <laughs>